Hi guys, another day, another video. I apologize for the slightly dim lighting. That's because otherwise it's overwhelmingly hot in uh, my bedroom. And I also apologize if you ever pick up some of the noise from the street. My flat overlooks uh, a busy roundabout here in Milan and it seems that lockdown is uh, well and truly over. Anyway, in today's video, I want to talk to you all about full immersion, whether indeed it is still the best route to learning languages or not. I'm going to discuss the pros and the cons of going the full immersion route. So, full immersion does exactly what it says on the tin. One day you decide to up sticks and uh, move abroad with the hope of learning a language. Let's bust the first myth. No, when you move abroad, you do not automatically pick up that language. It does not just suddenly become uh, injected in your veins. You don't learn the language via osmosis. Now that that's out the way, one of the basic tenets of language learning, and this is something that I will continue to talk about at length, it's a point that I will stress continually, is like anything in life that's worth having, you only get out what you put in. So let's look at pro number one. Pro number one, the first advantage of full immersion is the fact that they are real life situations, the ones that you're going into. It's not in any way artificial. You go and move to Portugal and if you need to set up a bank account, you go to the bank and you have to somehow find the language. Perhaps you prepare a few expressions beforehand, you use your dictionary but you have a specific goal, you have to go to the bank to open a bank account and you either pass or fail. It's very uh, dissimilar, it's nothing like a role play that you might find in a sterile textbook. That is pro number one. Pro number two is the fact that you need to survive in that country. So you do need to learn at least the basic expressions, the basic phrases to make sure that you can get things done. Some countries are easier than others. In certain parts of the world, there is a very high level of English. In other countries, the full immersion route can also be particularly effective simply because it's a case of you must speak that language, otherwise people won't understand you. Portugal in particular, it's my most recent full immersion experience. Uh, was somewhere that has a, a typically pretty good level of English. Uh, so that can obviously bring with it advantages and disadvantages. Coming on to Portugal, it's a very accurate barometer of where you are. This is advantage number three. Often when you're dealing with people who are strangers, people you don't know, they're not necessarily a sympathetic ear. It's not like having your own specific tutor or teacher in a classroom environment that obviously knows you and knows the struggles that you've had with the language, the journey that you've been on, and so they're more willing to have that flexibility. Now often people can be a bit short with you, they can uh, run out of patience. So that's a very good barometer. I remember when I was in Lisbon for the first two months I found it very frustrating because try as I might to uh, speak Portuguese, I was often met with the replies in English, regardless of uh, the role in society that that person had. As I said, pretty good level of English across the board. So it was only once people began answering my queries in Portuguese, or I was able to properly engage in conversation, that I really realized that I had made a bit of a breakthrough. As for pro number four then, we're on to social life. The great thing about living in a foreign country, if you can make friends, which is not always easy, we'll look at that in the pros, in the cons section rather, but if you are able to have uh, a social life and you can go out for meals and go out drinking, then clearly you experience a whole different gamut of emotions and crucially, you are, you are able to encounter different registers of language. You can learn different ways for saying things. You can learn uh, slang expressions. It's not simply the language that you might encounter in a classroom environment. It's not going to be uh, the audio that you listen to for listening exercises, even though I must say voiceover artists these days do a pretty good job of uh, coming up with some relatively realistic scenarios. Ultimately, when you're in a, uh, a busy, loud nightclub and you have to understand the barman, how much it costs, things like that, or uh, any sort of social situation where you might encounter this uh, slang language, then clearly that is a massive pro to full immersion. The final pro, pro number five, is uh, potentially living in a flat share. 
that is what I would suggest is the best route to really expose yourself to as much of the real language as possible. It can also be a um, particularly good way of saving money. In some ways, it doesn't make too much sense if you decide to move abroad and then live on your own or live with people that speak your own language because you're missing out on all those daily opportunities to really practice language. Uh, I remember I lived with uh, two Portuguese um, people, a man and a woman, and uh, an Italian uh, girl as well. And uh, the Portuguese guy, José, and I shared a bathroom. <laughs> we were constantly uh, having butting heads because he tended to spend a lot of time in the shower. So it was a case of knocking on the door, or asking him to hurry up. Maybe I'd get a sarcastic reply um, back. But these are all very good situations. Then you can also pick up on irony, on sarcasm. Um, people can be biting in their response. People can mock you as well. And these are all very good learning opportunities, but you clearly need to have a thick skin. So those are the pros. Now let's move on to the cons. We'll start with the fact that it's not always logistically possible. So uh, I mentioned there about the fact that you can uh, pick up one day and just go and decide to live abroad. Many people can't do this because perhaps they have an office job or they have no way of uh, supporting themselves financially by moving abroad. So it's, there's no guarantee. I was fortunate in that I was doing a lot of work remotely, uh, translating uh, for Italian football clubs' websites, and I also then did other uh, travel for work so it meant that ultimately my home base uh, wasn't hugely significant. Coming back to what I was saying about a flat share, the flat share really depends on what stage of your life you're at. When I moved to Lisbon the first time around uh, I was uh, 28 years of age going on uh, 29 and it was a, a good time for me in my life. I was still young enough to be flexible enough to deal with all of the issues that come up during a flat share. You know, are ultimately living with uh, people you haven't necessarily chosen to, to share the same space with. And so you need to be flexible, you need to uh, be tolerant, which is uh, a particular challenge of mine. Um, but now, coming up to 34, I'm not necessarily sure I would be so willing to go and uh, share a flat, which obviously then detracts from the uh, effectiveness of that full immersion situation. In fact, when I moved back to uh, Lisbon the second time around, which was a rather short-lived experience uh, because of uh, work opportunity that came up in Milan, that particular period lasted three months, but in that case, I was moving back to Lisbon with my girlfriend. So it wasn't a case of finding a flat share. It was, okay, let's get a place together. And clearly there are then fewer opportunities to uh, speak together. Con number three is technology. Has technology detracted from the effectiveness of full immersion? When I first moved abroad during uh, my time doing Erasmus, so that was uh, 2004, uh, I was, uh, excuse me, 2005, I was only uh, 19 at the time, and clearly back then uh, we barely had Facebook. Facebook was around in England, uh, but not in Italy. There was no Wi-Fi in the house, so you had to go out to an internet cafe if you wanted to use that. There was no smartphones. So a lot of my language consumption came via Italian television and talking to my flatmates. Now, if you wish to, you can just be on your smartphone all the time. You can talk to friends back home in your mother tongue using WhatsApp, either via message or call. You can watch your own content in YouTube. You can have Netflix. The disadvantage, therefore, of this particular situation is you can move abroad, but not necessarily make the most of the benefits. Technology can be a wonderful thing. In fact, conversely, technology can also detract from the effectiveness of full immersion in that you can almost create your own artificial foreign language environment from the comfort of your own home. That is a topic that I will discuss in future videos because it's clearly something that I have to deal with myself. Finally, uh, number four, which is the uh, penultimate con on this uh, particular video, is it can be quite challenging uh, from a social perspective. It can be very difficult to properly build a social life to make friends. That's something I encountered myself uh, when I moved to Lisbon, simply because I was working from home. I didn't have those same opportunities that I had previously enjoyed. Uh, the first time that I lived abroad, I was doing Erasmus, uh, Erasmus? Erasmus in, uh, in Siena and then in Toulouse. And then after that, 
Uh, so clearly with that, you're meeting students from all over the world, you're put into classes, you're uh, in uh, halls of residence or a flat share, whatever it may be. There are Erasmus nights, there are always events going on. Very easy to meet people. But the next time I did a full immersion experience, which was in Brindisi in the south of Italy, there I had a teaching job in an English uh, private language school. There I rather cynically decided that I didn't really want to uh, hang out too much with the uh, English-speaking members of the staff. I think it's a bit churlish to, to deliberately avoid contact, but if you don't necessarily have things in common, my main goal there was to try and improve my Italian, and thankfully, uh, via sport, I joined a rugby team, I was able to make uh, a number of friends that year. But the following year was quite taxing because I went and uh, worked as a language assistant in three primary schools in Avignon, one day a week for three uh, separate days of the week in these uh, schools. So clearly you're not making too many friends in those scenarios going in for just uh, a morning or an afternoon in, uh, in a school once per week. And then also there were other students doing Erasmus, there were other students working as language assistants, but they were three or four years younger than me. And believe it or not, at that stage of your life, you have a lot less in common. And uh, having already done the whole year abroad experience during university, um, perhaps I had less in common with them than I would have liked. So social life in terms of full immersion, when I went to Portugal, I found it very challenging indeed, because whilst I got on well with my flatmates, often because you're comfortable with these people at home, you don't necessarily make the same effort to go out, to go for dinner, to go for drinks. Everyone does their own thing. And also working from home meant that I didn't have any excuses. I would go into Benfica once a week, but it was a case of going in, a few pleasantries, getting my job done, and then leave again. So you don't have that banter or the, uh, the office environment, which can be so conducive to making friends when you're spending 40 hours a week with the same people. It can be a case of love them or hate them. Finally, uh, con number five, and it's uh, quite an obvious one, I would suggest, is full immersion can be a very stressful experience. You have to pack up your things, leave with a suitcase or two. You have to go somewhere that you don't necessarily know. Clearly, you don't know the language because that's why you're going in the first place. You have to find somewhere to live. You have to try and make friends. Perhaps you have to register as a tax resident. So that brings with it whole issues. Uh, open up a bank account. There are a whole host of different um, administrative formalities that you have to really get to grips with before you can start to make the most of the full immersion experience. And if after six months you're not really enjoying yourself, it can be quite hard to untangle all of that and to move abroad again. Anyway, just some thoughts of mine on the five pros and the five cons of the full immersion experience. As I've said, I've been able to experience it now in Italy, in France, and in Portugal at varying stages of my life. But I'd love to get your thoughts on this particular topic. Have you ever moved abroad? Did full immersion work for you? How have you been learning languages? And do we really need to? Can technology replace the need to move abroad? Or should we embrace that experience for what it is, a potentially life-defining one? Uh, I'll be talking about technology and its use in language learning in a forthcoming video. But for now, please subscribe if you like my content, like the video uh, if you enjoyed this one as well, and click the notification bell if you're that way inclined. That will give you um, a notification. Exactly, it does exactly what it says on the tin. You will be told by YouTube when I've uploaded a new video. I'm particularly productive in this period of COVID-19 lockdown. One video a day will be trying to keep up that particular rate of uh, production. But in the meantime, see you on the next video. Cheers.